Hurricane Aaron has shifted west over the last 24 hours and has become a very intense hurricane, and this may end up bringing some more impacts to areas like the United States, Bermuda, the Bahamas, and even back over in the Greater Antilles. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Hurricane Aaron and what has changed over the last 24 hours. We'll begin with what's happening with Hurricane Aaron right now, which it is currently positioned just off to the north of Puerto Rico. This storm has gotten a lot larger as well. This has almost doubled to almost tripled in size already, and this is forecasted to become a much larger hurricane over the next few days as it continues to move off to the northwest. And so this is going to grow in size. It was a pretty small hurricane yesterday when it was a Category 5 hurricane. It has been downgraded all the way to a Category 3 hurricane, but by the time you're watching this forecast, it is likely going to be a Category 4 hurricane again. It is undergoing an eyewall replacement cycle, and that is what's going to lead this to rapidly intensify again again this evening and then as we go into tomorrow and Tuesday we are anticipating this to be fairly close to the Bahamas which we could see some impacts there including high wave heights rip currents some storm surge and tropical storm force winds and this is a closer up shot of Hurricane Aaron which is currently a very high end category three hurricane you can actually see the swirl right now going around the attempt formation of an eye we have an eye wall that is forming it is likely going to be a very large eye this time around assuming that this does clear out it is running out of some time to actually fully undergo an eyewall replacement so there is a low chance that we actually could see this gradually weaken as it moves to the northwest however if this eyewall replacement cycle is successful we are going to see this almost undoubtedly become a mid to upper level category four hurricane wouldn't even rule out another run at being a category five hurricane this evening with how powerful this hurricane already is but it is a much larger hurricane which means it will take a little bit more time to actually rapidly intensify compared to what we had yesterday where it was a very small hurricane this is also visible satellite imagery this afternoon looking at the eye you can start to see it clearing out a little bit it is just barely clearing out a few hundred miles off to the north there of puerto rico we've actually had some big flooding in puerto rico out of this hurricane and that is all because of the fact that this hurricane is growing in size all that red and yellow that is reaching out of puerto rico are very cold cloud tops aloft which also indicates that there's a lot of rain falling in these areas and before we go into more detail on hurricane aaron i do want to point out that yes there is another area of development right behind Hurricane Aaron, which this will likely become our next tropical storm in the next seven to 10 days as it tracks to the west. The reason why I want to point this out is that this one actually will have a slightly better chance of going in the direction of the Caribbean Sea or even towards Florida or the Gulf in the long term. There is still a chance it could also turn out to sea, but I think the odds of that happening out of this tropical wave are lower than what it has been with Aaron. I do think there's a better chance that if something were to develop out of this tropical wave, we may have some problems in the long term in the United States. There's also a very low chance of development just off the coast of North Carolina today. I don't really think we're going to see anything develop here, but that is a small, weak, low pressure system that is formed off to the north of Hurricane Aaron that is not expected to really develop into anything significant. Now, this is the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center regarding Hurricane Aaron, exactly how intense it will get and where it'll be going. So over the next 24 hours, this is forecast to become a Category 4 hurricane. It could make a run at becoming a Category 5 hurricane overnight tonight, but since this hurricane is larger than what it was before it will take more time to rapidly intensify therefore it's not entirely certain that we're going to see this become a category 5 hurricane again then it will eventually approach the bahamas as we go into tomorrow morning there are now tropical storm watches and warnings in effect in the southeastern bahamas ahead of hurricane Aaron. and then as we go into tuesday into wednesday this is going to continue to track to the north and northeast it will stay out to sea again it's not going to make landfall in the united states the biggest change to the forecast is that there is a better chance that this will take a more westerly track, meaning that we will likely see some tropical storm force impacts back over in eastern North Carolina, specifically in Cape Hatteras. There will also be life-threatening rip currents anywhere from New England back into Florida over the next several days due to the power of this hurricane. Additionally, we are expecting the threat for upwards of 100-foot waves, not near the United States, but well offshore. So obviously, most cruise lines have canceled their trips anywhere going towards Bermuda over the next several days due to that risk because it's almost impossible to actually boat through waves that high. And as I just alluded to, the wave heights are going to literally be massive. We will likely see 90 to 100 foot waves only a few hundred miles to the east of South Carolina. Now, right along the coastline, anywhere from North Carolina back into Florida, even back up towards Delaware, there will be waves just offshore. They're going to be as high as 15 to 20 feet. So there's going to be some very high waves over the next few days. Once again, I really recommend if you are at the beach and you have any intention of swimming, check the flag at the beach because rip currents are going to be 
life-threatening, almost undoubtedly too dangerous to even swim out there over the next few days, anywhere from about central and southeastern Florida, at least all the way back up into New Jersey, but we'll likely see some problems later this week back over in New England. Now, if you're wondering if we're going to see tropical storm force winds anywhere along the east coast of the United States, out of Hurricane Aaron, the majority of us will not. However, there have been some trends to the west over the last 24 to 48 hours with how many wobbles that we've been seeing with Hurricane Aaron that have led this to actually go further west. So I do think in the long term, this is going to track further to the west. Again, we're not expecting landfall in the United States. However, we are going to see, I think, tropical storm force winds back over in Cape Hatteras. We may even see some wind gusts near tropical storm force levels from anywhere from Cape Cod over in southeast Massachusetts, all the way back over towards southern North Carolina. So it's a fairly large area. It's mainly going to be the immediate coastal regions, though. I'm not currently forecasting really any storm surge, maybe very minor storm surge over in Cape Hatteras if we can continue to see this trend further to the west. But overall, it should not be anything major, just something that we need to continue to watch for. I think the biggest story, again, anywhere for anyone in the United States right along the immediate east coast is continue to watch this. But there's no reason to be panicking and there's really no reason to be evacuating either unless anybody tells you to do so, which I highly doubt we're going to see evacuations out of this hurricane as it is staying well offshore. So this is the future radar on Hurricane Aaron over the next several days, beginning with tonight. This will be approaching the very far eastern side of the Bahamas. As we go into Monday, it's going to continue to sit just barely east of the Bahamas. It's a very slow moving hurricane as of right now. As we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, it will slowly turn off to the north and notice how the European model does not have this very far away from North Carolina. We are going to start to see the winds pick up, I think, in Cape Hatteras as we go into Wednesday evening. And then by Thursday morning, that should be the peak of the winds over there. And then there might be some storm surge back over in Cape Hatteras. I still think it's going to be pretty minor. And then just off to the west of Bermuda, we are going to be talking about some really impactful wave heights. In addition to that, we're talking about dangerous rip currents again up and down the east coast, including areas like Bermuda as well for Thursday. Friday, this eventually turns out to see we're going to be really done, I think, talking about Aaron by late Friday as it'll move into the northern Atlantic Ocean. And then it should kind of weaken as it approaches the United Kingdom. And then as we go into late next week into the weekend, we're probably going to have another tropical system to talk about. Right now, the European model does not have it doing much, but you can see a small weak low pressure system by Saturday just to the north of the Lesser Antilles. If this were to take the same path as Hurricane Aaron, it's not going to be very successful because the water temperatures are dropping like crazy behind Hurricane Aaron because all the water is being mixed up by that hurricane, and it is just so powerful that it's going to take a couple of weeks for that water temperature environment to actually recover. So this would have to go further down to the south for it to be actually intense. For right now, the European model has it north, but it could easily change, and if it does go into the Caribbean Sea, there will likely be a hurricane again. And this is a closer view of the wind gusts back over in the Carolinas as we go into Wednesday night. They should get upwards of 40 miles per hour right along Cape Hatteras. Inland, we're talking about wind gusts around 20 to 30 miles per hour. This will peak as we go into really Thursday morning, maybe into the early afternoon on Thursday as well. Wind gusts could get up to 60 miles per hour back over in Cape Hatteras. Virginia Beach maybe even up to 45 miles per hour. But generally speaking, nothing too major, just something to keep an eye on. Again, there might be some isolated power outages, but beyond that, we're not expecting too many impacts for the Carolinas, at least for now. And we do have a little bit of severe weather to talk about across the United States today. There is a slight risk of severe weather in place for northwest Iowa, southwest Minnesota, southeastern South Dakota, and northeastern Nebraska. A few marginal threats of severe weather in place as well. Where the biggest concern will be damaging winds in large hail, there is a very low chance of an isolated tornado this afternoon and evening in southwestern Minnesota, so stay weather aware. And then on Monday, the threat of severe weather continues, but it'll be pretty isolated across the Midwest and the Central and Northern Plains. Not expecting anything too significant, just isolated wind and hail will be a possibility. So here's the timing for today across the Midwest. We're expecting storms to fire off right around 5 to 6 o'clock in western Minnesota, also across northwestern Iowa. Biggest concern will be damaging winds and isolated hail. There is a low chance of a tornado. The windows should be primarily between about 4 to about 8 o'clock. So that'll be a time frame to watch for for an isolated brief tornado. But outside of that, it's going to be a pretty messy setup today. There will be plenty of showers and thunderstorms. Lightning is a possibility. If you have any outdoor plans, definitely something that you want to take into account. And then as we go into tomorrow, we're expecting a few more storms across the Midwest with isolated wind and hail being a possibility across Illinois, Wisconsin, and then eventually moving through Indiana and Michigan. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We may have another video tomorrow, but if not, the next forecast will be on Tuesday. There are no signs of a live stream anytime soon, unless for whatever reason, Hurricane Aaron were to shift any more to the West, which I do not think will happen, but it is something we'll be keeping an eye on. If that does happen, we'll definitely have another video tomorrow. So stay tuned and we'll see you guys all again in the next forecast.